An accused rapist and a fugitive is in photos, smiling, looks like laughing with his parents in resorts. We're a family. We wanted to see each other and enjoy the little bit of time that we were together. If you hadn't seen your son for a number of years, and you were there with him, you'd be happy. Skiing, living the high life. Now just being with Alex. Four times in eight, nine years. I wouldn't describe it as skiing in the high life with him. But you understand, that's what people think. They can interpret it any way they want. We know the truth. We took the pictures we wanted had some connection to Alex. And we didn't know whether it would be the last time. Each time we met, we had to treat it like this is the last time. Mm -hmm. This is the time that we're together. Alex had also let one other person into his life, a young Swedish student named Elizabeth Janssen. For five years, they lived together, traveled together. And eventually, Elizabeth learned the secret of Alex's other life as an accused rapist. That's not him. That's, that could never have been him. That's not the person he is. Knowing the two women over a span of only four days make these claims. Still, you have no doubts? No. Why? Because I love him. And he loves me. And we have a life together. Alex began spending several months of the year with Elizabeth's family in the tiny island village of Klottesholmen. He taught the children church songs and how to windsurf and swim. The Kellys grew comfortable calling and writing him there. In one letter to his parents, Alex wrote, I had a great winter this year, great ice climbing, flying. I would love to live like this forever. Doesn't everybody have to have some sort of activity, some sort of life? I wasn't going to just sit in a box somewhere. What went through your mind? Did you figure that you could just stay on the run forever? It's a big world out there. There's lots of places to go. That's him there. There was something about Kelly that got under your skin. His arrogance. The arrogance of the family, the arrogance of Alex. The total disrespect for law enforcement in general. We spoke to the family on numerous times. Nothing. Eventually, we had to force somebody's hand. Special Agent DeFonso decided to leave the Kellys alone. Let them become relaxed, very relaxed, until it was time to make his move. By 1994, his seventh year on the run, Alex Kelly began to worry about his passport expiring. In a letter home, he asked his parents to help him obtain false identity papers. But Kelly apparently did not anticipate that the FBI might make his parents targets of their investigation. And neither did Joe and Melanie Kelly until early one morning that summer. Seven years after Alex Kelly made his escape, the Connecticut Fugitive Task Force raided his parents' home. Location, the Kelly residence, concerning the fugitive Alex Kelly. This police video, taken at dawn on July 18, 1994, shows the arrival of 16 agents under the command of FBI Special Agent Ralph DeFonzo. We knocked on a door, identified ourselves, let them know that the FBI is here, task force is here. I ran and grabbed some photos that I hadn't hidden and um, foolishly tried to stuff them into something that I figured they probably would find it, but what could I do? You never imagined that they might come and search the place? I, I did never figured that they would do the scope of what they did. They just sifted through everything. For seven solid hours, they sifted and uncovered pictures that proved the Kellys had taken vacations with their fugitive son, letters that proved they had stayed in regular contact. And then they hit the jackpot. In Melanie's handbag was a letter she'd forgotten to mail, bearing the exact address where Alex was hiding in Sweden. I could just sit there and think how incredibly lucky they were. <laughs> Nothing else, just luck. After all those years of not even mentioning his name in this house, you gave Ralph DeFonso everything he wanted. Do you think about that? Oh, yes. The FBI finally had undeniable evidence the parents were involved. Special Agent DeFonso decided it was time for a confrontation. We were aggravated that we were lied to. Angry. 
Yes. I'll tell you, we've heard it from the Kellys. You told them they're scum. You called them losers. You have to get people to talk to you. Sometimes there's positive ways of doing it, and sometimes there's negative ways of doing it. Did you ever say, Alex, you've got to come back and face it? You can't keep running. If Alex had called up and said, Dad, I want to come home, he'd have had a ticket waiting right at the airport for him to come home. But you weren't going to try to talk him in. I could not take that responsibility. I would have to live with that decision. That would be me making the decision for his life. And if he was going to stay out in the cold, you were there to offer him whatever love and support you could. No questions asked. The investigation quickly shifted to Sweden, where Ralph DeFonso knew Alex was hiding. Detective Roger Hellickson. The 19th of uh, July, 1994, the police department received a telefax from Interpol about a man called Alex Kelly. We knew that he was living on an island about five miles north from here at a place called Kledesholmen. Detective Hellickson was the first to arrive at the house where Alex was staying. The first to discover that Alex had already gotten away. I mean, it hurts like hell to leave behind people you love and your life. But when you're running for your life, you do what you have to. We figured if he got away, he had to be tipped off. There had to be some kind of signal, you know, get out of Dodge, get out of Sweden. The Kellys refused to comment, but according to the FBI, that signal was a desperate phone call in the middle of the night from Alex's parents. What would Ralph DeFons do if he had a son or a daughter and he thought that he was being railroaded? Would he give him up to police? Let him face me and tell me that he's, he'd turn his own son in. For that matter, let me, let me hear that from a lot of people. The local newspapers splashed the story of the raid across the front page, right alongside the damning pictures of the family at play. Many who had once seen Alex's parents as victims now considered them collaborators. Editorials suggested the Kellys were arrogant and called for their arrest. They feel that, apparently, that they're above the system. So that's arrogance. If you can help your son be gone for eight years, that's arrogance. There you go. Pictures of mommy and daddy. Ralph DeFonso now saw the parents okay, as the linchpin in his investigation. Some, uh, Privately, he urged the Justice Department to prosecute the Kellys. Publicly, he tried outright humiliation, plastering wanted posters that described Alex as armed and dangerous, right where the Kellys would see them. Who, who was going to see this but us and fr our friends? It seems to me like they were trying to humiliate us or to harass us in some way because it wasn't going to get to Alex. There was more heat being drawn on the parents than the son, that maybe the parents should get together, talk this thing out and get that, their son in. You'd be willing to be prosecuted before you'd encourage your son to come in? We wouldn't turn him in. We did talk about him coming back. There's no doubt about that. But I would never turn him in. But the Kellys had to do something. Their secret was now exposed. And Alex's passport was about to expire. So they hired the high-powered attorney who had helped Klaus von Bülow beat an attempted murder charge. Not guilty. Tom Puccio, who was himself once a federal prosecutor, agreed it was time for Alex to come home. This whole incident involving his parents and the ordeal they went through, uh, the search of the home and all the trauma, I think that refocused him on, well, now's the time. Puccio met secretly with Alex in Europe and came up with a plan for his surrender. My experience in law enforcement tells me that you can probably stay at large, quote unquote, for your entire life. But running from yourself is another thing. And so on January 19th last year, after spending his entire adult life on the run, Alex Kelly simply walked into police headquarters in Zurich and surrendered to Swiss authorities. He spent four months in prison awaiting extradition. Alex's girlfriend, Elizabeth Janssen. 